Today, I wanna to talk about why I believe Ibanez is the best all-around brand that you can get. I know what you guys may be thinking if you've seen my video about the Music Man Stingray. I still stand behind my words about that particular instrument. However, there is one brand that covers everything that you could ever want. If you're a semi-hollow player, or you're a metal player, or you're a blues player, or whatever style of music that you play, Ibanez has the instrument for you. My very first bass ever was this one right here. It has seen better days. Um, some failed experiments here with the pickups and stuff like that. These are EMG pickups. I was so excited to get this bass. I was short by the money a little bit and my dad gave me what I needed to go and get it. Still to this day, it just has a feel to it. It has a great feel to it. It had a pretty decent tone to it, but what led to my issues with it, what led to me leaving it behind and moving on to Fender, the pickups, this is a PL5050 Ibanez Proline series, and it had these pickups that came with it. They were stock pickups, and they were good, but they started to malfunction for some reason, and when they went out, I could not find a replacement for them. We didn't have resources like we do today. You couldn't just go on the internet and look things up in 1991 or 92. You couldn't find anything. And I went to other shops and other techs and stuff like that and talked to them about it. And they were like, just put EMGs in it. Hence the EMGs that are in here now. This was a big mistake. I should have just been patient and figured out what I needed to do to get the same pickups back in here. I could have just called Ibanez at the end of the day, and I, which I never did. But I've talked to a guy who's gonna put the right pickups in here. It's not really my thing. It's something that I could definitely do. I just don't really, have a ton of experience doing that, like taking apart computers, doing other stuff like that. These things don't seem to be a big deal to me, but when I'm like messing with the electronics of an instrument, I don't want to get it wrong. And for some reason I get nervous about it. So I just turn it over to a, a real professional who can handle it. So this is base number one, Ibanez number one. Great solid base. If you can find one, they're fun to play. I learned all of my main techniques on this base. Of course, I started out playing with a pick, then I moved on to my fingers and became more of a finger player. Then I started slap, pop, and tap. I did it all with this bass. And then I moved on to a Fender Precision bass along with the Padula fretless bass. I became super interested in playing fretless. And other than the Ibanez musician, you didn't really see a lot of Ibanez fretless basses. At least I didn't see them in the stores. So that was why I moved on to Padula. Let me move on and show you my next Ibanez bass that I ended up getting. Ibanez ATK 700. I love this bass. <laughs> this was the second Ibanez I ever purchased. It is a great bass to play. This bass is basically a direct competitor to the Music Man Stingray in every way. It's tone, it's feel, it's made to slap, pop, and tap. to slap. I, I'm not a really big thumb up slapper. I know that ultimately it's supposed to be better, but for me, I've always kind of liked the thumb down or across. Anyway, the tone of this bass is great. I love it. I've had it for a couple years now. 
and I don't plan on parting with it. Once I got the space, I started to really remember why I bought an Ibanez in the first place or why I was so happy with the Proline series. This space is super affordable. It's got great tone. It is a little on the heavy side, but it's not the heaviest base ever. It's not as heavy as like a PVT-40. It's not nearly as heavy as a PV base or some of these other bases that are out there that weigh a ton. It does weigh a little over 10 pounds, but still, it makes up for it with its tone and its playability. It's super pleasant to play. Great bass. Now I'm gonna move on to the third bass. SR506E, Ibanez of course, it's a Sound Gear series. Now this is where their basses start to get interesting because right here the lines get blurred and I feel like this is a six string bass by the way, but I feel like this bass, it reminds me of, of playing a prestige Ibanez guitar. I've picked up plenty of Ibanez guitars over the years from their old ones that were built in the late 70s and early 80s to up and all the way up until now. I've played several Ibanez guitars. I think my favorite Ibanez guitar is kind of a tie between the semi-hollow or the hollow body Ibanez that George Benson plays and or and also Joni Mitchell or the art core which Andy Partridge played. Andy Partridge from XTC played the Ibanez art core in the late 70s, early 80s, he, that was like his main guitar. He still has it to this day. Um, love those guitars, I love them. But we're gonna stick with bass for now, but still, this bass here, it is not perfect. It's a little too low, the action's a little too low, and I've been struggling to get it completely right. I need to take it to a professional. I know, I've heard your comments, people. I'm gonna get to it. I'm just a really super busy guy, just like all of you. And I appreciate you putting in the time to watch this video. Anyway, this thing makes me, you know, I have a flamenco guitar. And when I'm playing this bass, I find myself wanting to do uh, flamenco style stuff or play chords. And um, it's a very special bass. I can't imagine being without it. I've had a six string before. I've had two other six string basses. The first one I ever had was a Ken Smith. Not comparing this to a Ken Smith, just hear me out. And then of course I had that super cheap bass, which you guys can go and watch that video on that was a G style, which was garbage, really. It's gone now. I mean, I, I shouldn't say it was garbage, but it just wasn't up to par for what I wanted. I just didn't really need it. So I got rid of it. But this one is very good. I could almost see tracking. I could see playing it live. This brings me to the fourth Ibanez bass. You'll see it in the other video. It's the SR700. This bass, as soon as I played it, with the exception of some of these really high-end boutique basses, the thing played like butter. It played so well. And this is another point that I wanna make about Ibanez instruments in general. They all play so very well. They play great. And this is why I feel like they are the best all around brand, because no matter what instrument you pick up from Ibanez, it will typically play so well that you will think that if there's something you cannot do, that it's your fault. You know, it's not the maker of the instrument with them. They make everything almost too easy to play. I only have two basses that have Bartolini's, this bass and my Padula Buzz bass. It's a, it's a nice sounding bass. I love it. Even though I have the ATK 700, this SR 700 was super light. That's another point I wanna make. So here are my final thoughts on Ibanez and why I feel that they are the best all around brand. Number one, 
they are affordable and they're not garbage. Ibanez instruments are super affordable and this is one of the main reasons that they are the best all around brand. Number two, the feel, the playability, whatever you wanna call it, they play like butter. Just about every instrument you pick up, they don't let their instruments out of the factory playing like crap. They make sure that they are in good condition, that the intonation's straight on them, and they are very, very easy to play, and they're a pleasure to play. Number three, the craftsmanship. They really pay a close attention to detail, longevity. They've been around for so long, and they're still here. They're not going to close shop. They're an empire. I feel that that is very important when you might need certain things for these instruments. You can always pick up the phone or get on the computer and get in touch with someone at Ibanez and sort out any issues you may run into. Will I go back to Guitar Center and pick up that SR700? Probably not, but it's not because it's not a good bass. It's a fantastic bass. It played better than any of my four string basses right now. I just really connected with it. It's a great bass. There's another thing, two octaves. Most of their instruments typically are 24 frets. I feel like you could just go further with their instrument. You can keep reaching when you can go all the way to. One more thing. Another reason that Ibanez is the best all around brand is because they have an instrument for every level of musician. The affordability fits right in with it. If you want a super expensive instrument that's boutique style, they have that for you. If you are on a budget, but you want something that's gonna be reliable, they have that for you as well in the, either the Geo line or whatever it may be. I think it starts with the Geo line, but they have something for everyone and it's not garbage. Just like their competitor, Ernie Ball, or Music Man or Sterling or whatever, those guys have low budget instruments, but they are still good solid instruments. Well, Ibanez has them too. And quite frankly, Ibanez could be better than Music Man or Sterling, except for the fact that there's a classic design that Sterling has, or that the Music Man design, that Stingray design, that classic design that they do, and that headstock, it's really hard to beat. I mean, this is not my favorite headstock ever. My favorite, Ibanez headstock would have to be the art core headstock for sure. Thank you for watching this video and I'll have another video out to you very soon.